Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, hi, nice to meet you. If you're returning, hi, I miss you so much. If you're here from seeing the last episode of this little video podcast, give it a thumbs up because I'm really excited to start this series. I've actually been wanting to do this for a long time. And if you like it or if it's helping you, show your support. <laughs> As you can tell by the title, this one is gonna be about dating yourself, learning how to enjoy your alone time and why it's important. I'm so passionate about this because practicing these things and like implementing these things into my life are what have formed me into a woman that I respect so much. Like I genuinely respect myself so much. I have so much appreciation for who I am. I know my self-worth. I know my value. I know what I do and don't deserve. I stand up for myself now. <laughs> I know that this video is gonna be so important and beneficial and if you take the things that are talked about today into consideration and apply them to your life or try them out I promise you you're gonna glow up like you're gonna level up in general today's candle is a new one I got from Target it's called pink champagne it smells really good sparkling citrus and white grape mmm it just smell like fire I just I smell like fire and then today's drink is my very loud and dramatic water bottle my Halloween themed one and the drink inside is actually watermelon electrolytes. Excuse me. Another random update is I got the viral crisscross chair from TikTok. Absolutely obsessed. I got it in pink, of course. But those are my random unnecessary updates for today. I have my notes on my computer. And I noticed in the last video, you can constantly see me like looking back and forth. I'm going to try my best to avoid doing that because I was annoying myself. So I would not be surprised if I was annoying someone else. Enough yapping. Let's get into the video. So I firmly believe that taking care of yourself should always come first. It should be your first priority. I used to be that person that would constantly put myself way on the back burner. I would prioritize my friends, my family, my work, just other people before me. And I would notice so much that like my glass was always empty because I was always pouring into other people's glasses. Something I constantly think about is how I wish I could go back in time and just tell my younger self how important it is to get to know yourself before allowing someone else in. Because allowing someone else into your life, especially when you're young, has the biggest impact on how you develop as a person, especially if you're young. If you're in the ages like 13 to 18, these are the most influential ages that we go through where we're so vulnerable to others. And it's a really hard thing to navigate, especially when you're young, because no one teaches us how to navigate this. So like I said, especially when we're young, we're so easily influenced due to wanting to fit in, um, wanting people to like us, wanting our crush to like us, wanting to avoid being bullied, just wanting to be accepted and etc. But that's something that we normally don't end up recognizing in the moment and more so in your early 20s, mid 20s, sometimes even pushing your 30s, that's when people start to realize it and regret allowing themselves to do that. Like around that time, around the early 20s, mid 20s, sometimes pushing 30s, that's when we start to like realize and have an epiphany like, I don't know who I really am. The point of dating yourself and the significance of learning to love being alone is to be able to determine your own likes, your own dislikes, your own passions, your own hobbies, your own interests, your own vulnerabilities. It's for you to learn and to be able to trust yourself that you have your own back when it comes to valuing and caring for yourself and about yourself physically, mentally, and emotionally before allowing someone else to come in and have an impact or influence those things before you're able to establish them for yourself. That's so important. A lot of the time when people hear the term self-care, they instantly think of like spa day, face mask, taking a bath with a candle, just like surface level things. And while those are forms of self-care, I wanna talk about the more fundamental parts of self-care, which the fundamental aspect of self-care is promoting your well-being and practicing self-awareness, self-love, personal growth, and all that kind of stuff. Something I personally experienced and a reason I'm so passionate about this topic is I grew up from my like 14 year old beginning of like independency, like getting my first car, getting a job around that time. I grew up with someone by my side during that entire time from 14 to around 22. And even though at the time, like I wasn't able to admit or acknowledge the fact that I was doing this, I now 100% can admit that I was fully conforming myself to fit the mold and try and get that person to consistently like me and fit the mold that that person preferred me to fit, if that makes sense. And I know for a fact that a lot of you guys do the same thing. It's just unfortunately a way that we're wired in our brain. If we're like really getting down to it, we grew up as babies and kids needing the approval for our parents or else we wouldn't get what we needed. Like we had to satisfy our parents to 
get food, to get toys, to get their attention, to get praise. So it's a natural instinct and it just goes way back in time. But I know that a lot of people from the age of early development to sometimes college years, we spend more time trying to fit the molds of others rather than spending time molding ourselves. I came up with that by the way. Once I hit like my intro to 20s and was leaving my teen years, I genuinely just started to think all the time. I was like, who am I actually? Who is Araya? Cause I don't know Araya. I know Araya and this person, which you're not crazy is a common thing to think about and to have pop in your head around your 20s is to kind of question your whole personality and like just who you are. So even though it is something common to experience in your 20s, I'm hoping that this video is able to influence some younger people to avoid having to wait so long and figuring this out later in life rather than sooner. The past four years, I've become a completely different person. I am not who I was growing up. Obviously that's supposed to happen, but if you ask anyone that knows me, I've done a full 180 of who I was and the direction that I thought my life was going. Like teenage me would be jaw dropped if she saw how much I respect myself. If she could see how established and secure and confident I am with myself and my personal identity and how original I've become. And it's something I'm very, very proud of. Oh my goodness. Are there other dogs that live here and exist in the world? How dare they, right? Mm -hmm. Like I was saying, it's something I'm very, very proud of myself and I hold highly to me. I want to share some advice and tips and ideas for dating yourself. If you hear Zuko, just ignore him, okay? And just starting that journey of learning to love being alone. Also share how I learned to love and really cherish and value my alone time. There's so many benefits to learning to enjoy your own company. And without giving a whole summary for this list, I'm just going to go through and name some of the benefits. Number one is self-discovery. Like I said earlier in the video, you you get to discover your own interests, passions, likes, hobbies, etc. Number two is self-awareness. That's a given. Number three is self-confidence. The way that you gain confidence from learning to love yourself in your own time and dating yourself is something you cannot get from anything else. And once you get it and once you achieve it and get that feeling, it's like it never goes away and you never want less than that. And it's such a good thing to have in your mind. Number four is independence. Obviously spending time alone, learning to love it. You become a lot more independent knowing that you don't need someone else to fill that void. Number five is personal growth, also a given. Number six is improved decision-making. By that, I mean you're able to make decisions that truly align with what you want and who you are rather than what you think someone else would want from you. Number seven is exploring creativity. When you're spending time alone, you might end up wanting to pick up a new hobby, try something you've been wanting to try out, pursue new things, try new things, just think outside of the box. Number eight is self-care, which I will touch on in more detail later in the video. Number nine is freedom and flexibility. Honestly, being alone and like spending time with yourself is kind of amazing. You get to choose what you want to do. You get to choose how you're going to spend your day. You get to choose what you're going to wear. You get to choose the time and place of everything. You don't have to compromise to someone else or have someone else in consideration when it comes to your day and your time. Number 10 is stress relief. Number 11 is improved relationships. This one is very important because I did not realize this back then, but now I'm able to realize that because I'm so established with myself, I'm able to give my true self to relationships like friends, coworkers, family, strangers. I'm also able to maintain healthy relationships with the people currently in my life because I know what I stand for, what I deserve, what I want from that person and what I am able to give to that person. So I don't settle for less. Number 12 is being able to establish authenticity within yourself. Basically in simpler terms, that means just being original, not being like a trend follower or just following everybody else's interests or opinions and really just aligning with your authentic self. Number 13 is empowerment. Girl, well, like I said, the confidence that you get from being so self-established, it's like a high. Number 14 is boundaries. Boundaries have become my favorite thing. <laughs> spending time alone and loving spending time alone, getting to know yourself while spending time alone, you're able to establish your boundaries and make sure that your needs are being met and getting respected. Number 15 is freedom from social expectations. And by that, I mean, you're able to go out into the world without worrying about having to conform to what others are wanting or expecting of you. You're like, this is me, take it or leave it. And the last one is number 16, which is expression, kind of piggybacking off the last one. Basically, you're able to just give self-expression without worrying about judgment or criticism from other people because you're like, this is me and I love it. Okay, when it comes to actually doing the action of dating yourself and solo dates, I know it's intimidating. I was definitely intimidating when I first started. If you're not intimidated, then that's great. You're already two steps ahead. Even if you're dating someone right now, or even if you're not, or even if you want to, you should always be going on dates. And I don't mean like dates with them or friend dates. I mean like 
like dates with yourself. You deserve to have constant dates with yourself. The same way that a real relationship with another person takes this, it takes courage and commitment to date yourself. So whenever you start solo dating, try pushing yourself to step out of your comfort zone a little more each time. I promise you, once you get through that first solo date and then just keep getting through these future solo dates where you're pushing your comfort zone, you'll feel this sense of success that you literally can't feel through anything else. First off, the same way that you get excited about going on a date with someone that you might have a crush on or that you like or a friend date, get excited for your solo date. Spend time getting all cute, romanticize the process, pick out a cute fit, do your hair, do your makeup, take some selfies afterwards. Just make it special because it is. Okay, now for solo date ideas. Before I name these, I do unfortunately have to say this because the world is not the best place, but please keep this in mind, especially if you're a woman. Before you go out into your solo date, let someone know that you trust when and where, what time, how long, like the details of where you'll be going, as well as bring a form of self-defense. Like for me, I always have pepper spray on me. Just something to protect you and still be aware of your surroundings. Solo dates, especially once you realize how fulfilling they are and how empowering they make you feel. Like I said, it does give you this high where you feel like you're on top of the world, you're invincible, you're the main character, which as you should, but make sure you remember and keep in mind that everyone around you also sees you glowing and this confidence that you have. It's attractive when someone is confident in their own self. So there might be some weirdos out there, some creeps or some dangerous people that might see you and want to take advantage of that. So just always keep that in mind that your safety also needs to be prioritized. It's getting a little dark in here, so I'm gonna turn my lamp on. The first solo day is really basic, really simple, not too intimidating, but going to the movies alone. This is a super easy solo date. Like not a lot of people are paying mind to you considering everyone's there for the movies. You're able to calmly go in, just get your snacks, go sit down in your seat, enjoy the movie. You don't have to think too much. You're just watching a movie and being able to enjoy your own company. This was the very first solo date I ever did for myself. I was so nervous. I went at night too, which I was a little scared about. Out of all movies, it was Smile. But even though it was like a scary movie and it was my first time doing it, I left feeling so happy and so successful and kind of just like giddy. Like I was so proud and excited to do it again. The next one is also a really calm one, but it can be more intimidating because there's a lot more people around you and it is something that you normally do with someone else by social standards. But take yourself out for dinner, go to your favorite food place. For me, whenever I did this for the first time, I went to this restaurant called Mad Greens, which is like a little salad bar. And then I went to this cafe diner called Cafe Java in Austin, so good. And I really just went to places that I usually would go to with my friends or my mom. And then over time, once I got a little less intimidated, I started going to nicer places, fancier places, actual restaurants, and just treating myself to dinner. It was just so nice. It was so peaceful. I really enjoyed my own company. I was left alone. I just was able to enjoy the food and leave after that. At one point, this became like my favorite thing to do was just go to eat by myself, especially if there's outdoor seating. I loved sitting outside when it was really nice out. I would people watch. I would listen to the sounds of nature, meaning like occasional birds and just cars driving by, but it was still outside. And I would really try to disconnect from my phone. I also noticed that during all these solo dinner dates that I would start filtering through thoughts in my mind that I had been putting off or have just been bothering me and I would leave with more clarity. Now I'm talking too much. Okay, spa nights are one of those more surface level things that everyone thinks about whenever you hear self care, but it's a lot more than that. Something I started to incorporate anytime I felt stressed and then eventually just whenever I felt like it was I would go to Target or Ulta or Walgreens or wherever and I would get some face masks, I would get some stuff for my skin, I would get a bath bomb, some new lotion, perfume, just like things that were just fun to spoil myself with that you would normally do at a spa day. And then on my way home, I would get a smoothie or a nice coffee or something and then I would run a bath. I would put Epsom salt, my new bath bomb, I would light a candle or two, and then I would put on my favorite podcast at that time, get in the bath, and just listen to the podcast with my eyes closed, and I would be so relaxed. It was so comfortable, it was so needed, I felt so good. And then after the bath, I would get started on my everything shower. Ladies, you know what that is. If you don't know what that is, if you're still kind of young, then an everything shower is basically where you like completely pamper yourself. You exfoliate, you shave, wash your hair, do a hair mask, moisturize your skin, make yourself smell good, like everything. You just leave feeling so clean and just like 
ultimate like feminine empowerment. I don't know. It's like a drug. It's such an amazing feeling. You literally feel like that girl after an everything shower and a nice bath. And then after everything, I would put the face mask on. I would either read the book I was reading at that time or I'd watch my favorite show. Still trying to remain being disconnected from like my phone or social media or anything. And I would just end that night and wake up the next morning feeling so good and just so calm and peaceful. It just does something so beneficial for your mental health. Okay, the next one is picking up a new hobby, obviously. Picking up a new hobby is one of the best things to spend your free time and alone time doing. For me, I ended up getting back into reading. I used to be a huge reader when I was a kid. Like I would lock myself in the bathroom at night at like two in the morning and just read because I was supposed to be asleep, but I wanted to read. I was one of those kids. But this time around, once I picked up reading again, I was really into psychology and like human emotions, human mind, that kind of stuff, just psychology in general. I would turn that into a date and I would get ready, get all dressed up, get cute. And then I would get like a cafe bag is what I call it. I would pack my laptop, my headphones, my journal, my book, my camera too, in case I saw something pretty and I wanted to take a picture of it. I would try different cafes. I would just set my stuff up, get myself a meal, get myself a drink, a coffee. I would get worked done if I needed to get it done. I would read, I would journal, I would just spend time with myself and I loved it. Reading definitely became like one of my big hobbies that I ended up picking up. But any hobby that you might be curious about or want to try out or you're wanting to get into, like now's the time to do it because you'll never know if it could turn into something or become a passion of yours unless you try it, duh. Photo shoot days are one of the most fun things to do. I would do this with both my best friends, my mom sometimes. Photo shoot days are just so fun. And when I started doing them by myself, it became like a new obsession. I would get all dolled up and I would match like the theme and location of whatever the photo was gonna be. For example, if it was like a picnic setting, parking garage setting, bookstore setting, shopping, a cozy setting. Like I would even do photo shoots in my room or something. I would bring my camera and my tripod. I would prep by going on Pinterest, getting fit ideas and like picture poses ideas, just inspiration for whatever I was about to go do. I would go to the location, I would take my pictures and then I'd go home. I'd go through all the pictures, pick the ones I liked, edit them. And like photo shoot days really do take up the whole day. It's such a good thing to try and fill your day with if you don't know what to do. It's so fun. Okay. This one is obviously if you have the means to do it, like be smart with your money. If you don't have the means to do it, don't do it. But if you do, going on a shopping spree, so fun. One of the best ways to spend like a solo date or just day in general is just solo shopping. Oh my gosh, it's just so, it's so different from shopping with someone else. As always, get cute, get dressed up for yourself, like feel good about how you look. I would get a nice coffee, I would get a smoothie, I would bring my headphones. If you're wearing headphones out in public and you're a girl, only wear one for safety reasons so you're aware of your surroundings, okay? Going to the mall or going to a shopping center, walking around all these stores, being able to shop for what you want, stopping to look at what you think is cute, you, not having to look and react to what other people want you to look and react to. Like not having to worry about including someone else. And it's not selfish, it's not rude because you still enjoy going shopping with other people, but you're spending time alone. Like you're enjoying shopping alone. Not having to take someone else into consideration when you're shopping is just, it's really nice. You just get to look at the things you like, you dislike, spoil yourself, and just like, just spend money on yourself. The last thing that I'm going to mention is spending some time doing some self-reflection in the form of journaling or a diary or just anything like that. And when I say self-reflection, I really mean taking time to admire yourself and write it down. Like write down what you admire about yourself. Take some time to appreciate yourself. Hype yourself up. This kind of forces you to put yourself on a pedestal as you should and as you deserve, but it also feeds into and fuels your own self-love, your own self-worth, your self-value, your awareness of all of that. Being able to appreciate yourself and do it continuously or consistently, it helps you build a foundation for you to be able to rely on and feel confident that if someone else doesn't do that for you or isn't providing you that same feeling or doesn't put you on a pedestal like you deserve, you know that you got you, you got your back. You can rely on yourself to fill that in the time being until you find someone that does deserve you. And you won't be allowing yourself to waste your time, your energy, your effort on this person that does not deserve you or see your self-worth because you see your own self-worth because you spend the time alone with yourself to be able to learn these things about yourself. Mm. My throat literally hurts from just yapping away. If you've made it this far into the video, I want you to go in the comments and comment a yellow heart, just so I know who's a real one. Also, if you have any other ideas of self-care, dating yourself, why it's important, please comment those below. Like this comment section is for everybody. I truly, truly, truly hope that this video sparks something inside of you. You have some form of excitement and you're looking forward to getting to know yourself on a deeper level. Dating yourself can be one of the most fun things and best things to experience, especially as a woman. So I really encourage you to try some 
some of these things out. Even if it's intimidating, push yourself out of your little comfort bubble. I promise you it'll pay off. Anyways, guys, that is it for this week's video podcast, which I still don't know the name of. If you have an idea, please comment it below. If you like this video or if it was helpful or if maybe you know someone who could use it, share it give the video a thumbs up, comment, subscribe if you want to see next week's episode. I love all you guys so much. You look so beautiful right now. Thank you for watching this far into the video. I'm gonna go eat a Hot Pocket. So I'll see you later.